Hey guys, welcome back to the Pig Daily. It's episode number 45. It's Icy Far Tuesdays, where most of you guys watching are. Wednesdays, where I am. So uh, thanks for hanging out. Today we've got a really good show. But before that, let's talk about next week's topic. And it's going to be the best topic we've probably ever had for Icy Far. It's going to be Test Map. Test Map Icy Far next week. Uh, we might even do it the week after that because it's going to be such a, a bloody good topic. So uh, yeah, if you guys haven't seen the changes that Blizzard are doing, um, here's the the blog from them. Um, just a few of the changes. Uh, you know, Cyclones uh, basically shoot a machine gun laser thing instead. Uh, <laughs> siege tanks can't be picked up by Metavex and do almost double the damage now. Uh, well, not almost double, slightly more versus light, a lot more, more versus armored, 70 damage versus armored. Um, Liberators don't wreck mutalisks anymore. Um, every single race has crazy attacks. Tempests have really short ground attack range now, but they can shoot this big burning kind of flaming ground type ability. Zealots have their base movement speed increased. Um, swarm hosts can, uh, they cost way less. Swoop uh, means the locusts can drop down from way further away. Infestors can like do this deep tunnel ability from the other side of the map. Basically there's so much crazy awesome stuff. So hop into the test map uh, with some friends, play a bunch of games. The crazier, the more exciting, the more ridiculous, uh, the better. So please do um, do that. Uh, people in chat are saying they will create a queue for it. They will, but they've had some technical issues doing it. So that might come in a few weeks or a bit later on, which will make it even easier. But for now, hop in, get your replay, send them over to me so we can cast them next week and have a good time. But for now, we are doing this week's IC Fire topic, which is confusion. So let's dive into map number one. And the whole topic with confusion is you need to take your third base oh, as your natural. yeah. Oh, thank you, Base Trade. Appreciate that. Oh my God, I was watching Base Trade when I went to sleep last night, and now I'm getting hosted. That means they were they were streaming for a long time. Holy crap! <laughs> uh, all right, thank you very much for that. Uh, let me just turn my follow. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Disable. There we go. I just followed myself, guys. Welcome, welcome to to Winter Town. <laughs> Send myself a tip now as well. Uh, all right, guys. So yeah, basically, you're gonna take your third base as a natural. This one was nice and easy because the previous week we didn't get too many submissions. So I was like, you know what? We're gonna go and make it easy. We're just gonna say you need to take your third as your natural. Confuse your opponent a bit. Make it a bit weird before we go back to some of the crazy ones like blood sacrifice, where you basically needed to kill your own units or kill one of their units uh, every single minute of the game. You continue to kill this game with your ignorant. Big noob, go to play Terran. I know have fun versus A move race, easy for me, noob. Oh, this guy's great. I really hope that, yep. And this is being submitted by uh, Clan Asian Final Fury or Aslan? Aslan? Oh, Clan Aslan. I thought it was like Asian. I'm like, that's a strange clan name. <laughs> Aslan's like the lion from uh, Narnia, right? Anyway, let's intro these players. Up here on the top left hand side, our Zerg player taking a bit of a verbal beating. It is Clan Aslan's Final Fury. And his opponent spawning against him in the bottom right-hand side of the map. The red Protoss player bringing out the BM. Bit of anger, calling Zerg the A-move race. It is Zar the Dude. It looks like uh, the Dude, for now, is just doing a pretty normal build. Kind of gate, nexus, core. He's going to be coming across the map, though. And now he sees no natural going on. And let's see... Let's see just how much confusion he gets out of this. I think it's not too rare for a Zerg player to be taking that third. You know, he sees the spawning pool finish. He might be worried thinking there's some sort of all-in that's uh, that's been happening here. So is he going to check the third? I don't think he is. So uh, the dude might actually be a little bit paranoid right now. Already starting to put down extra gateways. And I think, yeah, I think he might be a little bit panicked at this point. He's going to go back. He's going to try and scout. He's going to see that natural, but... Then he's going to get killed by these Zerglings pretty fast, I think, and uh, still has no idea that there's a third base up and running over there. He's going to come into that main. That Queen's going to shut it down before it sees anything, and it looks like Final Fury already starting to confuse his opponent a bit. Man, oh, <laughs> the dude. So salty. This is so good. <laughs> Pate pathetic noob. <laughs> And going up to four gateways is the dude. Dude. Four gateways actually incredibly fast. Um, 
all of them all of them down before uh, three minutes. So we're going to be getting out a lot of units very early, but no upgrades, no Twilight Council. Fury's going to come into these Zerg and he's going to have a poke around, but it looks like the Mothership Core is going to chase him off for the moment. And right now, the dude, I think, is a little bit paranoid. Locked into his base, he can't really see anything that's going on out there. Adding a robotics as well. And just trying to wall off desperately with no idea what's coming his way. And it's nothing! Zerg's just building drones right now. Queen's coming out, lots of economy being added on. Final Fury just kind of working his way up that economy. Aslan is also Destiny's cat. Quickly, Quickling tells me. Oh, okay. That's a, that's a decent name for a cat. Is it one of those cats that has a mane at least? That would make it much more awesome. Ah! So they're just going to have a little bit of a poke around. The dude, really uh, really paranoid right now. Look at this. He's so, he's so worried about drops or something like that. Looks like confusion is in full effect. Two more gateways coming down. It's going to be six gates and a robo on two bases. That's going to be uh, a lot of unit production. Warp prism already on the way. And it uh, looks like there might be a big attack coming right now. Final Fury on the other side, still droning up really hard. Already up five workers, going to be going up even more. And um, the dude, you know, you can tell he has a lot of vocabulary. I think that's like the sixth time this game he said, you play a move race. And don't start hatchery first. He did start a hatchery first, noob. <laughs> this is so great. All right, what did he get in there? I think he got a Sentry, Stalker, and two Zealots? Or was that just four Adepts? Let's see. I left the Zealot at home, the Stalker and the Sentry. Okay, so that is just four Adepts going to be going across the map to try and do some damage. On Master, you learning? Aha! And we've got four Roaches on the way. Zerglings are out, but they're not here right now. If these Adepts come in, they might get a lot of drone kills. The War Prism's coming on in. And it looks like uh, <laughs> it's a boosted account. <laughs> Damn, that's a big Adept warp in though. Ten Adepts here uh, in the natural. Going to start going wild. Lots of Zerglings in production, but I think Roaches are really what uh, Final Fury needs right now. I don't know if Zergling's going to be able to deal with this. Ah, Final Fury's having a tough time. Does get a nice surround on one of those Adepts. These Zealots here at the front going to start doing a pretty good job. Luckily, these Adepts at the back not really in the fight right now. The Zerglings are getting decent surface area. The Roach is doing damage as well, and those Zealots are being cleaned up. The dude just continuing to warp in units here as fast as he can. But so far, Final Fury's hold has been pretty decent. Remember, he pulled all the drones away. He only lost one drone here. He's still up about 10 workers. As long as he keeps this hatchery alive, he's still in a fantastic position right now. And it looks like Final Fury is going to start to take these stalkers down. The Warp Prism realizing time is up, and it has to just turn back out of phase mode, pick up, and get on out of there. Oh, you know what we don't have? Music. That's what we're missing. Turn that music on. Looks like the dude now. Oh, I just pressed back. Sorry, guys. That just rewinds it by a few seconds. I got to remove that hotkey, I think. When I'm, uh, when I'm observing. But it looks like the dude is going to just go down and take that third base now. Going to be forced to transition after the attack was deflected. And oh, the Zergling blocks the Nexus. Very nice uh, move from Final Fury. Actually, though, nice turnaround from dude. Does end up getting the Nexus and the pylon down. But uh, Fury sees everything. He knows, okay, you're going for a third base. You know, I'm a little bit safe now. He's got heaps of roaches and lings at home. Might even mount up a big attack here. I mean, we've got sentries, but they've only just warped in. They don't have much energy. Immortals only coming out one at a time. And actually, a little bit of a nasty supply block there for the dude. Just slowing down that immortal production a little bit. Oh, Zergling production on the way for, uh, for Final Fury. Looking like after crushing that attack before, feeling very confident just off this, uh, you know, 49, 50 drones to YOLO across this map. Massive Roachling in full force. And uh, I don't know if there's enough here. He's going to need Ravagers for sure to break the force fields. The Observer sees this. He's got to be careful. He can't go down that ramp. If he goes down that ramp, these force fields are going to just split this army in half. So uh, Final Fury's got to be really careful here. He can't get too carried away. He's looking to go for it. But there we go. Nice force field starting to zone this out. Good corrosive bile starts to open up a hole, but the units are only filtering through a few at a time. He needs some more corrosive bile to let himself through here. Some nice corrosive bile falling on the stalkers at the back, trying to focus down these immortals. One immortal goes down, all the sentries are down, and it looks like Final Fury just has too many units here. His confusion as well as his... Oh! As well as his opponent's uh, anger at, at Terran A move, apparently, in a PvZ. 
is gonna is gonna work out very well for him. The warp prism goes down. The roach ravage is still alive, killing lots of these units. Just started stepping away from these zealots, using that corrosive bile to uh, just damage that stalker and immortal as it chases it down. Keep in mind, there's no roach speed, so these roaches and ravages will get outmaneuvered eventually. But they're gonna take as many protoss units with them as they can. And at the end of the day, that is a pretty damn good trade for the blue zerg player. Final fury, looking healthy, looking good. So uh, still hasn't droned up at all behind that though. He's got a lot of roaches, he's still up in supply, but, you know, if uh, if the dude can hold out against another wave or two of that, he's going to be in a good spot. Problem is, no more force fields now, only one immortal. Plus one weapons is on the way, more sentries starting to warp in there, that's what he needs, sentries to buy that time. And he's going to need some more pylons, if he had some overcharge in that fight, that might have looked completely different, but for now, the dude is hanging on strong. Fourth base is going down for Final Fury, but Final Fury is still on a very low drone count. Of course, just getting a lot of minerals banked up due to the, uh, you know, continued zergling production now and lack of lava. But uh, it looks like it's just going to be another big wave of attack, this time with Roach Speed and about five Ravages once more to break those Force Fields. There's a Colossus actually on the way here for the dude, but he's only got two Immortals, a couple Sentry Stalkers and Zealots, and I think the dude's reeling a little bit, not realizing how Final Fury has so much stuff, feeling like after going for such a late hatchery, he must be behind, but little does he know, the hatchery was taken at the third base, and Final Fury is going to just YOLO on in. And get on top of this Protoss army. There's just not enough damage output here. There's only a couple pylons. Oh, the pylon overcharge will help out a lot. He's going to be able to use that. But the corrosive bile landing on both the units and the pylons at the same time. And I think the Zerg swarm is just a little bit too much. The final fury of Blue Zerg. Overwhelming our Protoss opponent. Colossus comes in from behind. But, oh, Roaches, Ravages, and Zerglings already on top of it. And I think we saw that one coming from the start of this game. Fucking noob A-mover. <laughs> hey, I had to hit C to use Vile. <laughs> Final Fury's uh, taking it all in stride. He's done a good job. Victory! GG! For some reason, the music cut off there. That's weird. GG, well played Final Fury. Takes the, the third as the natural. It actually works perfectly because his opponent was just... Just uh, a little bit up himself that game, a little bit angry about uh, races that don't have every unit as a spellcaster. Sad face. I hope all the replays weren't submitted by Zergs, or all, all the good ones anyway. Um, because, well, that would suck. That I make I make my uh, my icy far challenges heaps Zerg favored, don't I? But I, th I think it's not too hard to take a third base as your naturalist Terran and Protoss. It's a bit out there, but um, but it's all right. So the challenge this time, guys, is Confusionist. There's a lot of people just joining in in chat. You have to take your third base as your natural. Now, of course, this this is submitted by Beamoff, and he's a member of Pig Pan Clan, so I'm pretty sure he's the one going to be doing the challenge. Hey, A Flash, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, so Beamoffin, spawning up here in the top left-hand side, representing Pig's Pan. Beamoffin. With just that, that beautiful clan emote that we love so much. And of course, B-Muffin is going to be going up against Oniros, the Blue Terran player. And of course, it looks like uh, actually just going to be a pretty standard barracks gas opening here for... Um, whoa! As I say that, a second gas goes down at an insanely fast timing. Oniros wants to do some naughty, naughty, dirty build. Maybe some Cyclone, something like that. And here we go. Here we see it. The confusion starting. Hatchery spawning at the third base already. If you guys are wondering about next week's topic, it is in chat. It is going to be... It is going to be to um, blink DTs and stuff. Basically, you hop on the test map, play it out against uh, someone else, so you'll both be playing the test map, and uh, absolutely destroy it. So check out that link in Nightbot. Um, the balance changes which are proposed for happening after BlizzCon are actually really important. And you... You map hacker, mate. What was he doing? <laughs> I don't actually think he was map hacking, but that's just really odd that he came and checked the third before coming to the natural. What are you? What are you doing, mate? What are you up to? Why did you do that? That's really confusing. So what's Anaris doing? Really fast. Proxy factory. Ah, all right, all right. I reckon maybe we're gonna see some like proxy like uh, widow mine drop into like banshees or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, Anaris, you know, sees the third hatch. Realizes uh, he's up against something weird, and a second factory goes down at home. Oh my god. 
Or is it just going to be mass Hellions? A reactor sw going down here to swap with this factory. Maybe Hellions uh, built from two factories, just one of them proxied. It could be like a mass Hellion play. I have no idea what an Eris has planned. But uh, looks like just two guys on one gas, three on the other. Making sure uh, the mineral income is optimized for the moment. But ooh, B Muffin already starting an Evo Chamber. And this Overlord... Moving down here, looks like that is getting in position maybe to elevate us some Zerglings into that main. That could do massive damage. Right now, B Muffin does not see a natural expansion down. He's got to be a bit worried. He's got to be thinking like, what's going on right now? What are you up to? And turns out there is actually a tech lab on this factory. Oh, is it going to be siege tanks to, to push through these rocks? It could be siege tanks to push through behind these rocks and siege the natural which doesn't exist. <laughs> this is actually going to be so silly if he commits to that and there's just like no base there. There's already a Baneling nest on the way. Beam Muffin going for an insanely fast Baneling attack here. Look at this. I think he's going to bust the front while elevating Zerglings in the back. This is actually so sick. Beam Muffin coming up here. He's going to catch an SCV. Oh, nope. Doesn't, doesn't quite get that SCV. But uh, just kind of freaking him out a little bit already two hellions are on the way here though hellions pretty fantastic against zerglings if they're microed correctly and b muffin is going to be loading up those zerglings sending them in the back but i think Aneros has full vision of the main will be seeing anything coming his way and second siege tank is now in production this game's about to get really dirty really fast go banelings will be the right oh he sees it he sees the baneling the zerg oh the zergling actually cancelled the baneling did he notice it though i think he saw it i think he saw it okay he sees more zerglings now but here they go the zerglings are gonna try to get on they want to get this around oh my Oh my god, they trapped one of the Hellions. The Hellions didn't get up the ramp. They're going to try and hide behind the minerals, but I think there's just too many Zerglings here. Oh, good dodges by these Hellions so far. Two Hellions are going to go down, but all the Zerglings are almost dead. Great micro from the Hellions. And this attack looks like it's been stopped in its tracks. And Neros loses three Hellions, but cleans up almost all the Zerglings. But oh, he's got to be careful. There's more where that came from. At the same time, there's eight Zerglings in the main. Those Zerglings are going to run into that main mineral line. And uh-oh, things are starting to get out of control. He's fully focusing on micro down there. But goodbye, Mineral Line! The Zerglings just diving on top of the SCVs, starting to rip them to shreds. And the two Marines trying to get back there to support. The SCV is turning to fight. It is only six Zerglings left, but they've already done their damage. They've already killed a huge number. The tank's trying to intercept the reinforcements here, but these Zerglings in the middle of the map manage to catch them out. b Muffin finds the beautiful pickup there. He's got to be wondering where the hell did they come from, though? Why are there two tanks in the middle of the map right now? Oh, a couple of Hellbats are going to morph. These Banelings going to blow up both depots. Big supply block there for an, I an Iros. And it uh, looks like, oh, even with Hellbats, the Hellbats are going to get steadily overwhelmed. That last Hellbat morphing, the SCV is frantically trying to repair it. I think it is going to hang on. The Zerglings just don't have enough DPS to take that down. Oh, poor little guy. Just got body blocked. Bunch of, uh, bunch of football players just standing in front of that Hellbat, just covering for him. But there's still only one Hellion building at a time. There's almost no minerals here for Aneros. Aneros is still supply blocked, only has one Hellion out, one Hellbat, and one more Hellion in production. And B Muffin is not stopping. Just non-stop Zerglings and Banelings are on the way. More Zerglings going to that back door to hit there at the same time. And oh, this Hellion, it's gonna it's taking way too much damage. These Zerglings are gonna get it. Oh the Baneling oh, the Banelings are gonna get it. <laughs> Uh, oh, the splash damage on these Banelings is huge. Oh, nice focus fire from an Eros, but I don't know if it's enough necessarily. And this Hellion, it's trying to chase these Banelings down, but they have only one thing in mind, and it is giving some beautiful acid showers to these SCVs. Gonna actually go over and... Oh, looks like... Gonna take out that Hellbat. Goodbye. And it looks like there's just too much Zerg in this base. And Neros trying to do whatever he could to hang on, but at the end, I think there's just a little bit too much. It's time for your acid bath. Come have a party. B Muffin takes it out. Bam. And that was a weird game. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he was just planning to proxy factory with like the fastest second gas of all time from the start of the game, but I find it so funny that he's like, I'm gonna do this tank push on your back rocks, and he like sees the third and there's like no natural, and he's like, I'm still gonna put my factory here and build siege tanks and hope you take it. And then he just gets all in by Ling Bane. And it's like, oh, oh. That's that's Starcraft, guys. That's Starcraft. All right, last game of today, and apparently the most entertaining game, or so I've been told. So uh, let's take a look at this one. Let's dive on into game. It is going to be a PvP to finish things off. And spawning over here in the bottom left-hand side of the map, it is Spartan. Keep in mind, guys, these are all a big range of uh, 
of skills in the replays. Um, I think this is a GM replay. I'm pretty sure I recognize both these guys' names as being GM or at least top masters. Spawning over here on the bottom right hand side, it is Legion. Um, ECV is EC Visualize, uh, which is a European uh, team. Uh, I'm quite sure. Can't remember exactly where it's based, but I do remember that. If you guys remember Shark back from 2014, the young um, young Dutch player doesn't play anymore. I don't think he uh, he played for ECV. Came out with some surprise results that uh, I think it was like DreamHack Summer. Unfortunately, got knocked out by Tasia in the round of 16. Um, you know, who can blame him? But yeah, ECV that and uh, Spartan. I believe I was playing like yesterday or the day before on ladder. So. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is a pretty high level one, so this should be interesting. Looks like uh, this probe's going to be coming in from Spartan, taking a look around, and meanwhile, two very early gateways coming down for Legion, and that's really interesting, because those gateways are, like, super fast. Like, the first gateway is normal, but the second gateway is going to be done well before a cyber core would be finished, so interesting to see what Legion has planned here, and keep in mind, PvP, taking your third before your natural is going to be completely insane so I have no idea how this is going to work out um, I imagine you don't want your opponent to see it for a very long time by the way guys if you ever want to bend the rules you're always welcome to as long as it's entertaining so for instance if Legion here were to take Spartans third as his base I would totally accept that as fulfilling the criteria so the general rule is you're allowed to bend the rules as long as it's either like very tiny and it's like, ah, oh, well, it couldn't be helped. It was still an entertaining game. Or it's just bloody awesome, whatever you do. But uh, for now, uh-oh, Proxy Stargate coming out for Legion and that is going to be right next to the natural. It's going to have such a short distance. Looks like Spartan though. He's looking for it. Is he? Oh, oh he's already queued up to check everywhere for this sort of dirtiness and uh, he's going to be well prepared as a result of that. Interestingly, two Stargates going down for Spartan. Looks like Spartan actually wants to go maybe for some Mass Phoenix play. It looks like uh, both players kind of keen on on this Stargate action. And, I mean, Legion's got to feel his heart just drop right now. He's like, oh, you saw what I do. Do I still build the Oracle? I've seen two Stargates. Does he cancel the Stargate himself? I mean, as Legion here, you're kind of trapped between a rock and a hard place. What do you, what do, you do with this Stargate in this situation? Do you build an Oracle, hide it in the map, and then bring it in like a minute later? Um, or do you try to build Phoenix? Looks like, oh, he hits a supply block at the same time. He freaks out trying to figure out what exactly should I do in this situation. And actually, it's a supply block on 31. We call that the pig supply block because I hit it almost every game I play P PvP because I am atrocious. And it looks like Spartan was going for an Oracle, cancels it, opts for that double Phoenix production instead. The pylon is now finally finished. Let's see, does this Stargate get used? Legion says, nope. And Legion's just going to take the third base. Actually, there we go. Phoenix production does start up, but only one Phoenix. And going for his third. So it looks like Legion is the one playing the uh, the challenge for this game. And, oh man, what a hard position. I don't know how Legion's going to get out of this one, but uh, he's going to have to find a way. Spartan's going to have a huge lead in that Phoenix count. Both players are going to go for a Twilight Council as well. But uh, I don't know how... How Legion could catch up in the Phoenix count. He, he doesn't realize either. He also, I mean, he does realize. He also says, how the hell could I catch up? Cancels the Phoenix, says, this this can just be a dead Stargate. Let's just build probes, use that third Nexus, get up the Twilight Council for a Blink, maybe Archons, and just kind of defend with ground units really well, and then move on into that later stage. Meanwhile, Spartan taking a much later Nexus here. About 30 second delay on that, maybe slightly longer. Has a couple Zealots on the ground as well. And uh, it's just going to be massing up these Phoenixes. Spartan confident that if he takes his time, he'll have the Phoenix lead. But worried about Phoenixes coming out for Legion. Isn't actually poking across the map with them just yet. So very conservative play by Spartan. Just wants to take his time. And ooh, Blink, Forge, and the Templar Archives all on the way here for Legion. And that's going to be just... Yeah, straight into Blink, straight into plus one. Gonna get Archons out and uh, obviously High Templar, first of all. Get Let these Phoenix gather up heaps of energy. Of course, once they're at max energy, you just feedback them and plop. The Phoenix just disappear. You morph those High Templar into Archons. 
and that can work out splendidly. So it looks like Legion has feedback on his mind. And as long as you've got fast micro, that can work out exceptionally well. So already Legion up about nine workers here. Spartan just playing very carefully, almost going too paranoid after spotting that early proxied Stargate, but now trying to get back up in that gas count, taking these gases. And this is like some Rotterdam style Phoenixes here. Phoenix is still being built, but uh, he's going to need to start harassing sooner rather than later. Otherwise things might get out of control. Interestingly, charge already on the way. Pure Phoenix charge lot. Might be the composition here for Spartan. Very kind of fast-paced, mid-game, aggressive style. However, Archons will be the answer to it. Archons will absolutely destroy it. And here we go. Phoenix is all going to gonna derp out a little bit on some of these sky walls. Oh, they're actually not getting completely stuck. I'm impressed. These Phoenix pilots are a lot better than my Overlord pilots, I can tell you that. And he's going to finally come in. That Mothership Core needs to react really quickly. If that doesn't get off the overcharges, then uh-oh. Oh my god, he's in so much trouble. Does get two overcharges down. We'll protect the Mineral Line for now. And ooh, one feedback goes down, but you can't just have a single feedback on its own. These Stalkers and Sentries need to get back over there, but I mean, it's barely even enough to fight these Phoenixes. Um, if they just choose to pick up the, the Sentry and then pick up the Stalkers one at a time, they would be able to overwhelm that. He's going to come back in here. There is a cannon, a few Stalk Orpins, but nice probe pickups. Takes out the Mothership Core, a High Templar, and four probes for the moment. Also, oh, great micro by Spartan. Pulls back that weak uh, Stalker. Starts to focus down these other Stalkers as well. And, oh, these pickups are just brilliant. Legion being caught with all those Stalkers, not getting up here to help. Really needs to support his units. And this Mass Phoenix play for Spartan finally gets that opportunity to start equalizing the game. However, third base is already on the way for Legion. Legion really just wants to play this economic game. Wants to just rebound in that probe count. It's still up about three workers right now. But charge is almost finished. More gateways going down. More Zealots warping in. And Spartan might be having a, might might have a really scary timing opening up with just about 15 20 charge lots a whole bunch of phoenixes coming in because right now there's really nothing on the ground just nine stalkers and a sentry and two zealots for legion legion does not have a lot of units and these phoenix are going to come in and start punishing this picking up one stalker picking up another stalker good overcharge one phoenix goes down there but still a phoenix for two stalkers is not too bad a trade for spartan right now uh, he can't afford to take trades like that. Someone, oh, there we go, the blink coming down. Another Phoenix goes down just for a single probe. And this cannon in the third as well, starting to dish out the hurt. Great focus fire on the cannon, on the red hit point Phoenix. C beautiful control there by Legion. And it looks like Spartan's Phoenix uh, count really starting to fall here. Another Phoenix goes down to the blink. Legion just starting to stomp all over these Phoenixes. And it looks like Legion here making the unorthodox third base play work out. Really weird random pylon that Spartan decided to throw down there, by the way. Um, I don't know if he realizes pylons can't overcharge unless there's a Mothership Core around. The cannon does apparently win that fight. And it looks like Legion now. He's got High Templar up to shut down the following Phoenixes. He's got a plus one upgrade finished. High Templar Archives is finished as well. Archon's starting to morph in. And with that big economy, 44 probes, masses of gas income, already six gases uh, on the income tab. I think Legion's in a fantastic position. Finally, Spartan Zealots coming over to that third to clear out that Stargate. The Phoenix count has stopped for the moment, but no, no, it hasn't. He restarts the Phoenix production, gets plus one weapons and a fleet beacon. Why, why, why would you build a fleet beacon if your opponent isn't building Phoenix? Spartan's just going to go ham on the uh, the mass Phoenix war. And this does help at like picking up stalkers and uh, probes and stuff because you can do it from further away. But um, there's just so little on the ground for Spartan right now that Spartan's really got to worry about, you know, the economic situation uh and also just about generally having units on the ground but looks like he might just go for a timing attack here hasn't hasn't been building probes hasn't built a third and legion's still investing in so many workers i mean there's a few archons on the ground like i said they're the answer to this composition but there's still so many phoenix and those zealots still dish out a good amount of damage if they can get good surface area on the uh, archons they might be able to just overwhelm them pylon going down here to warp in extra units it looks like spartan here he's, he's just hungry he wants to go for the kill but no warp prism Building a carrier behind this multiple carriers? What? Is Spartan going to go all in here or is he going to wait for the carriers? I have no idea. I think Spartan seeing those Archons needs to back off. I, I don't think he can take this. The charge lots do charge in. He's going to come in with the Phoenixes. Starts to pick up the Stalkers, shooting them down ever so quickly. But those Archons just aren't going down. One Archon doesn't even go down. The Phoenixes need to get out of there. The Mothership Core goes down. The Archon Splash is going to be huge. If he stays any longer, a couple of the Phoenix do fall. And it is a trade-off for both sides. But Legion, with that superior th third 
base, fully mining against complete lack of a third base, is going to take the better end of the trade. Oh, and the cannon gets another Phoenix here. These Phoenix realizing they need to do something to try and keep Legion at home, but even a feedback going down, taking out another one. And this is just very well played by Legion to shuttle this down. Oh, the Phoenix starting to pick up these probes. More and more of them are going down. Another feedback goes down. That's the last of the energy on those. Does take Legion down to 50 probes, but that's still a 10 worker lead. And he's looking to counterattack, but seeing no third, Legion's going to be wondering what's going on. Little does he know there's two carriers about to pop right now. Plus one weapons is already finished on them. The carriers are almost out right now. And it looks like Spartan's going to come home with those Phoenix. He's going to try and mount a defense, but he lost the Mothership Core. He doesn't have any overcharge to help support this. It's just going to be one carrier with only a few interceptors versus this many Archons, and their splash damage is going to tear the interceptors apart. There is six, seven Archons here right now. Phoenix can't even pick up Archons because they're massive units, and that's just going to be really awkward. Oh, trying to intercept the reinforcements is this carrier. Starts to do a decent amount of damage to these, uh, these Archons, but... Oh, the Archons are just so damn buff right now. They, they don't really care about the interceptors as much as, uh, as Spartan would have liked, and... I mean, Spartan's got these carriers out. Looks like he's going to try and counterattack. Being knocked back down to one base. Needs to start rebuilding some Nexi. Legion. What is Legion going to build to respond to this? Looks like more Archons, more Stalkers will be the answer. The most desperate counterattack of all time. Oh, please don't get stuck on the, the Skywalls. Oh, the Interceptor's going to try and snipe down this War Prism. And... Oh, they actually get it. And now we get to see carriers just herping and a derping. Oh. I think he's going to go through the other side. Oh, is he? Are they going to derp? Are they going to derp? Oh, they don't. They don't derp. They actually made it. The carriers have made it through to the base. Looks like at the same time, a zealot counterattacking the third, but the cannons are strong. They are going to stop that. The archons and stalkers walking across the bridge. More archons coming across. It looks like it's going to go into a base trade. Two carriers versus the might of a huge archon stalker force. Are there more carriers out at home? Looks like yes, there is one more carrier out at home. And Spartan's actually going to make very quick work of that main base economy. The natural hasn't even been rebuilt here. Um, Spartan does activate a few overcharges, but are they even going to be able to kill a single Archon or two? The Phoenix is going to try to come in to help defend. The probe's pulling as well. One Archon goes down. A Stalker goes down. These overcharges, man, they dish out a lot of damage. Another Archon goes down. Actually, that's a lot of the anti-air falling there. And oh my god, if these carriers focus down this Templar archives and then the, and the Cyber Core, there won't be the ability to build anything that shoots up. Oh, and Legion, he's already warping in Stalkers, but only a few Stalkers on their own. I don't think they're going to be able to do it. Trying to focus down this carrier. Oh, looks like he's going to be able to focus down. One carrier goes down, but the Interceptors, I believe, were already deployed. These Interceptors are just tearing apart these Stalkers. Is that last carrier? Yes, that carrier does go down. There's only one carrier alive right now. Oh, these Phoenixes are there. The base trade is going in Legion's favor. One more carrier is almost out, but it gets deep out at the last second. And now we've just got these de deployed interceptors, which will run out eventually. Plus this one carrier with only three interceptors remaining, trying to finish off this main base. Spartan realizes he can't do it. Has to tap on out. And GG, well played to Legion. Takes the third base before the natural in the Protoss first Protoss and makes it work. Carriers are a good unit. It will actually be really cool once the interceptors are down to only five minerals each. So you can actually uh, afford to lose them and not just end up uh, infinitely behind. So uh, awesome, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's daily. It was a simple one. Take your third as your natural, but we got to see some Protoss BM uh, making fun of the Zerg player for not going hatch first when he did actually go hatch first. We got to see uh, Desperation Protoss there going for the proxy Stargate that literally does nothing except freaks the opponent out into taking your third and actually winning the game. So that actually worked really, really well. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Um, for you guys, do submit replays for next week. Hop on, get into the test map. If you're wondering how to play the test map, it's all outlined in that blog. Um, it's all going to be below the YouTube video. The information is down there. Click in the description, open it up. There's information about how to do it. Um, I'm also, you know, posting it in chat one more time. So anyway, guys, submit your replays on the test map. Play with all the crazy new, new uh, units. Blink some DTs. Deep tunnel some swarm hosts into your, uh, some infestors into your opponent's base. Uh, you know, throw some Tempest Death Ball or whatever it's called. What is it? It's like Fiery Death Zone or whatever the shit it is. Throw that stuff on the ground. Um, Disruption Sphere. I always feel like the Protoss abilities have such lame names. Like the Disruptor really should be called the Ravaging Ball of Death and it's called the Disruptor. Like as if the Disruptor shot actually disrupts things. It bloody destroys things. It rips them apart. But 
whatever. I'll leave Blizzard's naming to the to themselves. Apparently, only Zerg get cool names. Anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out. I'll catch you guys all tomorrow. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a walrus, and of course, punch a watermelon to the moon. I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye and good night. <laughs>